Welcome back. We are in problem number 10. Problem number 10. And I'm, I'm trying to do as many problems as possible because today's Thanksgiving and I want to build up an appetite to it to really take down that, that turkey. Anyway, they say, what is the coordinate of the point on a number line that it is exactly halfway between the points with coordinates 53 and 62? So the point that's halfway between those two is just going to be the average of these two points. So what's the average? It's 53 plus 62 over 2. And that's what? Uh, 5 plus 6 is 111. So it's, it's uh, 115 over 2. That equals 57.5. So that's the answer. And this is one of those ones where you have to fill it in. 57.5 is halfway between the two. At first, I was a little taken aback because I was a decimal. I was thinking maybe this is an integer number line. But they don't say that. So on a regular number line, you can have decimals. So this is the point. This is the this is the this is the point that is exactly halfway between the two. This is the coordinate of the point. Number 11. A certain triangle has two angles that have the same measure. If the lengths of the two sides of the triangle are 50 and 30, what is the least possible value for the perimeter of the triangle? All right. So, we got a triangle. And we know that two of these two of these sides are the same angle, right? And we know from geometry if the two base angles are the same, that that means that these two sides are going to be the same. And they tell us that two of the sides are 50 and 30. So either, you know, this could be 50 and this could be 30, or this could be 30 and this could be 50 cuz this can't be 50 and 30. These have to be the same thing. So we want to know the least possible value of the perimeter. So if we want the smallest possible value for the perimeter, we want more 30 sides and less 50 sides, right? So why don't we make this side 30, because then this side will be 30, and then this side will be 50. I mean, the other option would have been to do this. You know, these are 50, 50, and 30. But clearly, this would have had a larger perimeter, because we would have used 50 twice instead of using 30 twice. So this has a smaller perimeter, and what is the perimeter? It's 60 plus 50, it's 110. That is the smallest perimeter we could have. Next problem. Image, clear image. Problem number 12. Switch to, oh, I don't want to use a whiteboard. I see invert colors. Something psychological about a blackboard, I think. It makes it more engaging. All right. If x squared minus y squared is equal to 77, and x plus y is equal to 11. What is the value of x? So this is something that some people, oh my god, I got a system of equations, or I got a quadratic. What is it? What, all you have to do is factor this. What is x squared minus y squared? Well, you know, a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. Or in this case, x, plus, x squared minus y squared. That's just x plus y times x minus y is equal to 77. And, and the, the biggest clue on why you could do that immediately is because they told you what x plus y is, right? So we know that x plus y is 11. So 11 times x minus y is equal to 77. So now we know we divide both sides by 11. x minus y is equal to 7, right? So now we have this equation. We have this equation. Now we have a very straightforward system of equations. And we want to solve for x, right? So we can let the y's cancel out. So let's take that top one down here and just rewrite it. x plus y is equal to 11. Add the two equations. x plus x is 2x. Minus y plus y is 0. y is equal to 18, right? 7 plus 11 is 18. 2x is equal to 18. x is equal to 9. Done. Next problem, image. OK, we are on problem number 13. Tamara cut a circular pizza into wedge-shaped pieces, one of which is shown above. The tip of each piece is at the center of the pizza, and the angle of the tip is always greater than 20 degrees, but less than 30 degrees. OK, what is one possible value for the number of pieces into which the pizza is cut. Greater, OK, so this is interesting. So we have a, a pie, a pizza pie, it could, although it could just be a regular pie. 
and we have you know each each of her slices goes to center and then and this angle right here is going to be so let's call it theta it's going to be it's greater than 20 degrees so it's it's greater than 20 and it's less than 30 degrees, right? Well, let me ask a question. If theta was 20 degrees, how many how many slices could could she have cut? Well, there's 360 degrees in a circle, right? 360. So at 20 degrees, if every slice was 20 degrees, well, 20 goes into 360 how many times? 20 goes into 360 18 times, right? 2 into 36 goes 18 times. So if every slice was 20 degrees, it would be 18 slices. Similarly, if every slice was 30 degrees, 30 degrees goes into 360 how many times? Well, it goes into it 12 times, 12 slices. So, And we know that the slices are larger than 20 and less than 30, right? So we can't, so the slices, slices are going to be greater than 12 and less than 18. And so you literally can pick any number. It could, the answer could be 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17 slices. Any of those numbers would be a suitably correct answer. And that sometimes confuses people, but you should be confident. Any of these numbers that you put down will work. Maybe you want to put the middle one just to be comfortable. I think that would be, what, a 25 uh, degree? Oh, anyway, slices. OK, next problem. Fourteen. Okay, we have this sequence. A, three A, dot dot dot. Oh, sneeze! <coughs> oh, I felt that sneeze. Oh. Excuse me. The first term in the sequence above is A. I just went for a hike at a place that's called Windy Hill and it was freezing. The first term in the sequence above is A, and each term after the first is three times the preceding term. If the sum of the first five terms is 605, what is the value of a? So the first five terms, well, that's just going to be a, 3a, 3a, and each is, and then the next one's going to be 9a, next one's going to be 27a, the next one's going to be 81a, right? That's the first five terms. So you add them all up. 3 plus 9 is 12. 12, this is where I always mess up. 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 plus 27 is 39. 39 plus 81. I have to do I, 9 plus 1 is 10. And then 1 plus 3 is 120. So that equals 120a. So these are the first five terms, right? Each one is 3 times the preceding one. And the sum of these is equal to. 605. What is the value of A? A is equal to 605 over 120. And let's see, can we simplify this? Sure. If we divide the top and the bottom by 5, if you norm, that becomes, let's see, 121 over, let's see, how many times does 5 go into 120? It goes into 24 times. I think these are, is this divisible by 3? No. I think that's in simplest terms, because you can't divide by 2. can't divide by 3, right? 121. Is that right? Yeah, 121 times 5 is 605. So I think that is the simplest form and that, that you can do this problem. And I'm running out of time, so I will wait to do the next problem in the next video.